This is the Berber country, white clouds in a clear sky. The horizon is a mighty mountain. A salt merchant brings in the last contingent of his caravan. And suddenly, as the valley opens up before us, looms a strange mass of structures. This is Enlu, market village and little city, farm and fortress, all in one. Here is where our salt merchant is going. Down over these rocky, slippery atlas mountain paths, fit only for the sure foot of the donkey or the mountaineer, down rugged slopes bulging with graves. The eyes of the dead are upon the living. The suburbs of Enlu, the first houses, the color of earth, built of pressed clay on frames of rough logs, block-shaped houses with seldom a window, and above, the endless flight of the storks. Today is market day. Already the marketplace teems with unusual activity, for the town of Enlu sleeps six days and awakens only on the seventh. But on this seventh day, the entire mountain pours forth its population. And this square is, for a day, converted into a vast shop, money market, convention hall, and even a news center. Inside the city gates, amid the shrill calls of the vendors and the plaintive chant of the blind, the traveler may view a whole gallery of types from the Berber mountains, the spice merchant and all of his powders. The date merchant from the palm groves of the south, The salt merchant who brings his salt blocks from mines 500 miles away. The shepherd from the plateau, the buyer from the plain, and the eternal wrangling over the price. the grain merchant in his cloud of golden dust. And on his terrace, above the din, the town crier announcing land sales, weddings, pasture agreements, and prevailing market prices. These women sell poultry, These sell raw wool. And a gala crowd mills about, motley, picturesque, noisy. Many have come 20 to 30 miles in their colorful woolens, knitted leggings, multicolored sandals, to trade, inquire, gossip, to laugh about everything and nothing.
and so it goes all morning long. But it grows late. The market slowly empties. Trading time is over. The sun soars overhead and the shrinking shadows at the caravanserai where are grouped the pack and saddle animals tell us it is now high noon. 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 For two or three hours, everything stops, save the muffled breathing of a sleeping town. And the winter sun veers downward. This is the time for strolls and visits. Passing before this motionless beggar, a gesture, for alms are pleasing to Allah. A glimpse of the grocer's wares, he rules over an area ten feet square. And now the main square, forever swarming with children. The purchase at the cobbler's of a pair of square-toed Berber slippers. Perhaps a pause in this Moorish cafe for a fragrant smoke over the proverbial glass of mint tea. A glance towards the Kesra bearers coming from the baker's shop. and the tortuous streets that go up and down, and tiny miniature squares, porticos leading to quiet nooks, streets narrow as alleys, alleys like mere paths. All this hewn out of blinding light and stark shadow in bold hard lines, the bold hard lines of the Atlas country. The penetrating aroma of cedar from the forests floats over the town and blends with the sharp smell of burnt corn from the blacksmith's forge. For this is the hour when local industry hums. The jeweler in his little corner works on his filigrees. And the gunsmith in his dark den repairs all kinds of improbable old shootin' irons. And behind all this quiet activity, Silent, rhythmic gestures glimpsed in a hundred tiny layers, and in the background the murmur of the water that flows from the mountains, and around which women steep grass, women cut branches. Others sift grain. Still others dream on their doorsteps, but when the traveler passes, all doors close. Here, women spinning wool. The winter sun is mild. The village lives on as it has for a thousand years, facing this immense landscape as the storks circle in an empty sky. Hidden life lurks behind these earthen walls in the shadow of the mighty Moroccan mountains.
unknown elements in a human story as old as the hills, yet which remains a secret behind the guarded doors of these women carding wool. Or within the heart of this washerwoman. And evening will descend upon the rippling waters, upon the hum of household chores and handicraft, upon these poplars whose bare boughs shine yet in the winter sun. Moroccan evening with its dreams, its weariness, its frenzy, its songs and dances. To the town of Enleu, this place serves as casino, theater, and nightclub. The men sip mint tea, watch the dancing girls, and listen to a sing-song chant in their mysterious tongue. Like all the songs of the whole wide world, these songs tell of a heart that listens, of a shadow that passes. And still they dance, between slippers and sugar loaf. The same dance as they danced 2,000 years ago, the dance scene sculpted on the urns of ancient Greece. They dance, he dreams, before horizons too vast for him. The step quickens, the song becomes insistent. Night creeps nigh with muffled step, and above the storks circle still.